I have a neat tip and trick for you. Sometimes if you've had honey for a really long time, like I have right now, uh, the honey gets solid and you can't really pour it out as liquid form. So then the best thing for you to do is boil the kettle, which I did, and then I poured the hot water into a bowl. And now I'm going to immerse this glass jar into the hot water. Hopefully this will only take about 30 minutes. Sometimes you need to repeat the process just in case um, it's really hard and solid. But this is a good way to make use of any of the honey that you might deem to be a waste. But we don't believe in waste here, so I think this would be a nice tip and trick for you to help you perhaps save some money just in case you want to throw out the really manky looking honey jar that you have on the side of your cupboard. I've had one cup of coffee so far and I don't think I should have another one because it's past noon right now. Sometimes I feel like I have way too much. I heard one time on the Zoe Ball breakfast show about this coffee alternative, which is honey, apple cider vinegar, and hot water. I haven't tried it. I don't know if it's gonna work. I'm not sure what it's gonna taste like, but let's see how that goes. Okay, so the kettle is nice and boiled. So I think I'm going to be putting in equal parts honey and cider vinegar. I've put this into hot water to loosen this honey. So it is all loosened now. I think maybe I just pour the whole thing in. Just pour it all in. And I think I'm gonna put equal parts apple cider vinegar. This seems like a science experiment. <laughs> Gosh, what's this going to taste like? Maybe I won't fill it up too high. Going back to Zoe Ball's breakfast program, um, they were basically covering this topic because some people don't drink coffee and then others might not really want to have tea so let's let's see how this one goes you could smell the potency from the vinegar and it's just really weird having vinegar as a drink Okay, so let's see whether this is a hit or a miss. Okay, first impressions. Um, I do feel the vinegar and it does taste sweet. Um, I sort of want to say that it shouldn't work, but it kind of does, if that makes sense. Um, I don't hate it. I'm not sure I love it, but I don't hate it. Um, would it be weird if I brought some of this stuff to work to make like squeezy honey and, and vinegar? I think that, that would be really strange, but I don't think I should judge it unless I try it, right? So, oh my God. Um, so 
I would say to all you lovely people that if you want to try something different and you are tired of having way too much caffeine in your life, why not give this honey and vinegar concoction a try because it may work and you might get off the caffeine drug, which is a good thing. Um, so I am going to finish this. I am going to commit myself to this. So yeah, thank you very much. Well, I have a tip and trick for you regarding where to store the milk and how to store it. For milk like this, I don't really want to have it on the side of the door because that's where it is the most hottest part in the refrigerator. So it's really a good idea to fill up a canister or a drinking um, instrument. And I think it's a really good idea to also have a lid and hopefully it is glass or metallic. So this is going to keep my milk very cool indeed and it won't spoil at all. So I'm going to put this on the top of the shelf. So that's my tip and trick for you today. If you think that our show is absolutely smashing, then please subscribe. And what is it called again? It's called a marker on YouTube. And it's absolutely delicious. If you have left out laundry outside, make sure that you periodically check to make sure that it's not raining. Otherwise, you will be left with a, with a wet load and no one wants that. I have another tip and trip for you today. Get it? Trip? Because we're going on a trip? <laughs> um, anyhow, um, suitcases. Many, many suitcases look the same and most of the time they are either all black or solid color and then another person might have the same looking suitcase as you and then they might even take your suitcase without you even knowing and and a surefire way to distinguish your suitcase from others is by using some really interesting cute stickers because let's face it no one else is going to be thinking about that are they they're going to be thinking i don't want to get really children like stickers on my suitcase, but I don't really care. So, this is the suitcase, um, and this is also the suitcase. Uh, so this is what I like to do. So let's open this. And let's open this one as well. Uh, it isn't a good idea to put it on this fabric-like part of the suitcase because the stickiness isn't there for it to stick onto the luggage. Uh, but you could put it on these wheel areas. 
cats, which is what I am going to do right now. This doggy is looking for its home. So I'll put one here. I will put this one on this, this side. So let's not forget about these bunnies and woodland creatures. So I'm gonna put one over here. This is like a interesting um, plastic material, which is an ideal place to put your stickers. Maybe the owl wants a home. Another thing that might be a good idea is to use strings. I think my mom told me this way back when to use strings and tie it on your handles. That way, it may also stand out. So I would either put it on the top or the side. Let's put it on the side. So this is a string that I I'm using from, I think, clothes or something else. I forgot where. But I decided to keep it because I thought I need my suitcase to stand out from others. So this way, if you do see this string on this stickered suitcase, then you are be sure to say, yep, this is my suitcase no one else touch it and it does look very very stylish i would say and this isn't just for kids so i think my advice to you all is put lots of stickers on it and tie lots of things on it and hopefully your luggage and suitcase won't be that far from you once you get to your holiday destination i don't know uh i think i either forgot, didn't buy stickers or something, and it just didn't come to mind. And you read these things in the news about how a lot of suitcases are going missing, and then you think, okay, we just really need to find a way to help you identify your luggage, I think. So I think Stickers is a good way to help you identify it and my suitcase was looking kind of bland before it so at least it's bringing some new life to my suitcase. Air tags. I think they are really important because you hear about airlines losing luggages day in day out a lot of them do lose luggages for no apparent reason but a surefire way to find them and to help identify where your suitcase is is by using an air tag so we bought this because we were a bit concerned about losing our luggage so it is telling me to update to the light to the latest iOS or iPad OS, turn on Bluetooth. So these are Bluetooth enabled and you will go to the section where it says find my phone. So it's in that particular section where you would be able to identify, okay, this is mine and then it should pop up under that section. And then all you need to do is take this bit out and then put it into somewhere in your suitcase that has a zip that will have it um, being easily identifiable. And then you just need to program it to your iPhone. Then hopefully you will have peace of mind whenever you are traveling around. Finally, it is always a good idea to take pictures of your clothes and belongings that you are taking with you on holiday because that will help you 
if you need to put in a claim with your travel insurance. And they also advise you to maybe have receipts at hand as well. I hope you've enjoyed these tips and trips that I've offered you today. If you did, we would love it if you would subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's Paul and Marcus. We also appreciate your likes and comments as well. And until next time, happy travels and bye for now.